says she's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. What about Paul McCartney? Is there any place in the world that you have ever gone where you were not known as the cute beautiful? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's still quite a few places. Um, I go down to Jamaica, and, uh, if, they, you know, a few people know me, but, like, the people in the villages never heard of me, you know. I think if someone pointed out, this is one of the Beatles, then they'd, they'd click. But uh, I went, we were in a market, and um, I went behind a stall, and I was just playing with some puppies, and this and the lady said, um, you from America? And I think, you know, the long curly figure, right. you're American. I said, no, I'm from Britain. She said, oh, you are subjects, too. <laughs> that levels you right out. Subjects of Her Majesty. But not just any subject of Her Majesty. In 1997, the cute Beatle became a knight, Sir Paul McCartney. 32 years after all four Beatles were awarded their MBEs, members of the British Empire. Wonderful, glorious day for us all. Proud to be British, wonderful day, and uh, it's a long way from little terrace in Liverpool. So, just to be proper, yeah. do I call you Paul? Do I call you Sir Paul? Which do you prefer? Uh, I prefer Paul. My dad would have said, Sir, he said, do we spell that C-U-R? <laughs> no, that's, uh, you call me anything you like, anything but early. When, when people call you Sir Paul, if they come up to you on the street, does it startle you still? It sure does. What well, still, I haven't got used to it at all. Um, you know, it's, a, it's such a great honor. It's a wonderful thing for someone British. It's, it's the highest honor and stuff. Um, but it is very difficult to get used to. Um, only kind of time I ever hear it, really, because most of the people I work with don't bother. You don't make them <laughs> call you Sir Paul. complete <laughs> lack of respect amongst uh, But um, I'll go on a plane, and the pilot may say, welcome, Sir Paul. And I go, look behind me to see who he's talking to, you know. So, Take me back to March, then. You're at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. You are kneeling before the Queen. Yeah. She takes that sword from the left shoulder or the right shoulder and moves it to the left. Yeah. What were you thinking at that moment? Um, I was just nervous as usual, you know, like anyone who goes through those things. It's a bit of a haze when you're going through it. Um, I was thinking, I'm doing this thing in front of Her Majesty. I've got a lot of respect for the royal family. I saw the Queen get crowned, and it was quite a big thing in 1953, when I was like 11. Um, so it's a special thing for me, you know. She opened uh, the school for performing arts that we have in Liverpool. So I've seen her on and off, you know. Um, but it's still a nerve-wracking event. You're in front of all these people, you know. It's, it's, uh, but it's good. It's great. And the thing that really brought it home to me was uh, one of my kids, my youngest daughter, started crying when I was kneeling. And I couldn't hear her, but I heard about it later. And all my other kids were going, oh, she, she was crying. So that brought it home to me. You know, I thought, gosh, you know, one of the kids seeing her dad kneel before the monarch. Whereas I can tend to be a little bit cynical, because, you know. In of age, when things get older, that a lot of people think they're better because they're older, like us. People will like us a lot more when we're older. You watch. <laughs> when I get older, losing my head many years from now. How long would you like to keep on doing this? Forever. Really? I think so, yeah. I haven't found anything better yet. Sort of, for me, I really feel as though I'm a writer, really. Um, and I feel, you know, you'd be 98, be 100, and still say, yesterday, <laughs> tomorrow, whatever it is, you know. Uh, it, may, it may slow down a bit, maybe you get to be a few more ballads. But, uh, you know, it's just an act of imagination writing, and um, as long as I can imagine, I suppose, I'll be writing. Can you see yourself performing into your 50s, into your 60s? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't think, no, I didn't think I'd be performing when I was 30. You know, I thought it would be very unseemly to be jiggling around on a stage at that age, that great age. Now that looks very young, 30. I see people approaching 30, and they say, oh, my God, you know, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. And don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, I could be performing when I'm 90, you know, but the songs will be very slow, I think, by then. <laughs> 30 years ago, the Beatles had their first hit. You were 20 years old. You were beginning this life of phenomenal fame. Did you ever think that there would be a 50-year-old rock and roller? No way. No, I, when I was uh, 18, I looked at a guy who was 24 and thought, old. So, 50? No. Do you think that that age of innocence pre-Beatles can ever be reclaimed in the world? No. 
Um, you can't go back to the first summer you ever spent on holiday. You can't go back to that. You can't uh, relive those moments, but uh, you have to come to terms with that. You know, I think anyone growing up uh, would be foolish to, to think that one day it's all going to happen again. But I think what you do is you substitute the blessings that you've got now. I mean, I've got kids now. I didn't have any kids then. I was running around clubs trying to pick up girls, which was great fun. It was lovely, innocent. I remember it with great fondness. But I'd much rather be me now. You are Sir Paul. Your home where you grew up as a kid is now part of the National Trust. It's a historic monument. Mm -hmm. You've had so much success. What do you want your legacy to be? Um, I don't know, really. I most important things for me are values, or in my case, like family values. Um, if people listening to me chunder on about my kids or the family and how much it means to me, uh, see something in that that they want to emulate, then that'd be great for me. Then second would be music. Um, I hope they like my music. That'd be good too. When I'm 64. People do like Paul McCartney's music, of course. Some of it stands among the best ever made, but it's revealing that what matters to him more is his family, his values. He told us a long time ago that in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. He sang it, and then Paul McCartney went ahead and lived it. That's time and again for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Pauley, and we're history. And in the end, the love you take.